Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we're gonna to talk about Cardano and Cardano staking. Uh, we're gonna walk you through how to make a wallet uh, for Cardano using Uroi, which is the light wallet for uh, Cardano, uh, Cardano and eMergo. Um, and we're gonna to talk to you about how to stake using Uroi. Um, we're gonna go over the details of what to consider when you're choosing a staking pool and how Cardano staking actually works. Um, we'll do a brief uh, overview of how to send money from uh, an exchange, like in this case Coinbase, to a Euroi wallet. And then we'll have a brief example on how to do these similar things with Exodus, which is, to be honest, uh, a bit simpler and more straightforward. Most things, given that Exodus is very much geared towards beginners and simplicity, most things are kind of simpler when doing it on Exodus. So. Um, Remember, before we get started, please, if you get value, uh, consider liking, and if you'd like to see more like this, uh, subscribe. We'll do more wallet creation walkthroughs and staking walkthroughs in the future, um, and then more crypto-related content and some other kind of finance-related content in the future. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so getting started, um, you'll note that I, once again, I'm using the Brave browser, um, which, once again, if you're not using Brave, you're missing out. Um, but this is the Uroi website, uroi-wallet.com. Um, <clears throat> this is how it presents on Brave. It presents very similarly on like things like Firefox. Um, but as you can see, this is the Uroi uh, wallet um, roadmap, all of which is kind of um, presented in terms of like time periods where they plan on adding new things. Um, all this stuff is already accomplished. Um, you know, uh, Firefox support, uh, you know, all these different designs and stuff, uh, ledger support. Um, you can uh, spin up a full node, um, NFTs support, uh, Plutus support at this point. Um, we have all of this going. Um, there's a couple of technology integrations, Emergo, Input Output, Vacuum Labs, and Cardano Foundation in general, all these kind of backers. Um, but, you know, the, the actual first point is to actually get to this website. Um, there is actually a video walkthrough that they have themselves, um, so you can always use that as well. Um, but you kind of go down here and you pick which of these you actually um, are using. And the closest that Brave is, is to Chrome. Um, so it brings up the extension page, um, gives you all the information about that. Um, and you kind of just go and click add to Brave or add to Chrome um, and then add extension. And that happens pretty quickly. So it's about a 10 megabyte download, happens relatively quickly. Uroi has been added. And now we bring it up. Now it'll ask you for your language. Mine's gonna be English. Terms of service. Obviously, <laughs> read through all of it. Wink, wink. Uh, agree with that and press okay. Allow Cardano um, payment URL. So, yeah, well, well, there's a couple of tabs in Uroi that we'll go over here, but there's a receive page um, and being able to do your payments through this. We can we can allow. Um, and that's fine. Um, we'll we'll see the utility of this later once we actually get into the um, into the wallet. Now, there's an option to tra transfer from Daedalus. So there's two big wallets here. Uh, Uroi is, both of them are hot wallets. There's Daedalus and Uroi. Um, Uroi is the light wallet. Um, it doesn't spin, spin up a full Cardano node. Daedalus is the, um, the, the full wallet, which does. Um, there's the hardware wallet, which at some point I'm gonna have to connect my regular um, thing to it, but you can use Trezor or Ledger, um, uh, which of course I, I have Ledger. I personally prefer the Ledger over Trezor, but you have the option to use either with Uroi. Um, you can create a new wallet and you can restore a wallet. Now I'll go through a couple of these options because ultimately I'm going to have to go ahead and restore my um, uh, pre-existing wallet. Um, but we're going to go through and create a new wallet. Um, Cardano. Um, so there's paper and new. Um, we can create a new one. We'll call this one 
test one whatever and then you create a spending password remember when creating a, a password for anything um, it's important to have a combination of letters numbers symbols um, and sometimes writing it down on paper can be useful. And actually, remember, you are going to want to have a piece of paper handy because we're about to do the recovery phrase part. It's going to show you 15 random words. This is the wallet backup phrase. You never want anybody to see your wallet backup phrase. So obviously, you're not going to be able to see this recovery phrase when I bring it up. Um, but this is the part where, remember, you're going to want to have an actual piece of paper um, ready so that you can write this down. Never show this to anybody. Never enter it anywhere other than your, your own wallet. Um, if anybody asks you for it to, you know, reset it or do some maintenance on it or something like that, remember, that's probably fake. Don't do that. These words only go here in the wallet. Um, in order to restore your wallet and nowhere else for any other reason. Um, anything else that asks you for it is probably a scam. No matter how legitimate it looks, it's not real. Okay, so here you go. Now you write it down. Okay, now it's going to ask you to basically uh, put your recovery phrase back in. Um, to make sure that you actually wrote it down, that you can read your writing and that you have everything spelled correctly and that you have the right words. Um, so you go ahead and you just kind of tap which the right words in the right order. Um, and uh, at the end of that, you're going to be, uh, you know, pressing OK, basically. So here we go. OK, so at the end of having clicked all of the right words in the right phrase, are in the right order. Um, this will pop up. You kind of check these two things and it automatically pops up. If you get it correct, it'll automatically go to this screen. Remember, the secret keys are held securely on the device only, not on the company servers. That's important. And that if this application is moved to another device or deleted, your money is only reco recovered with the backup phrase, which you have written down. So don't lose that. Um, and keep it written down. Don't keep it electronically. Um, remember, once again, there are, as I discussed in the SoulFlare video, there are um, programs that can go through your computer and see um, recovery phrases that you've kind of typed down. Um, because remember, all of these words come from a database of preset kind of words. If you see 15 of these words together, that's probably a recovery phrase and they can actually uh, lift that um, from your computer. Uh, and also they have things like key loggers, which when you go and kind of put them in, um, they can see that you've put in a recovery phrase and, and log that down. Um, so then you click confirm. And this is this is what's gonna pop up um, when you click confirm and you've created your wallet, right? You've, you create the, the name of the wallet that you put in earlier is gonna be up here. You have a bunch of uh, tabs here, dashboard transactions, receive, or send, receive, voting and delegation list. Um, well, you will notice sometimes, especially with your Roy. So I'm making this uh, mid January 2022. Um, this is a you know a hot wallet um, that uh, is linked up to the network, and sometimes at times uh, of network congestion, um, you will have some. You see how it's all loading in there, and it took a while to actually pop everything in where it says how much ADA you have in your wallet, how much you have in rewards, how much is delegated. All of that took a second. So there's a reason in times of network congestion, uh, or if even if you have personally slow internet, um, these things may take a while, and sometimes it may take um, you know uh, minutes even um, to have that all load up. And as you already saw, there's the total number of ADA, there's how much are using rewards, and there's how much is delegated. Delegation is how much ADA you have um, uh, delegated to a staking pool um, to go ahead and stake your ADA. Uh, rewards are how much are um, you've gotten from delegating this much ADA. And your total uh, includes your rewards. Um, so that will automatically be put into your um, total account. What's really nice about your Roy, I really like this um, kind of setup here, is that it tells you each epoch, which is the next time that you're going to get a staking reward. 
right? So every five days, so an, uh, a Cardano epoch is five days. So every five days you get um, however much of a reward you get for the amount that you're staking. Down here, I'll show you um, when we open my normal account um, that there's going to be a graph here that shows you um, how much reward you've gotten in each previous epoch. Um, and then it shows you uh, also your total rewards and that increases over time um, as you get more rewards. This keeps a, a running log of your transactions. Um, it shows you how much fees there are, the total amount that was transferred, the status, how much confirmations there are, what kind of transaction type, the total number of transactions, and the date and time that they went down. This is the place where you sent a transaction from. Um, this is how much, and then it will uh, tr calculate the transaction fee automatically. Um, and then this is where you put in um, like the address. And so this, this address is just from, I opened a Pavia, and I had to send it to this address in order to activate the account. Um, this is where you would copy and paste whatever uh, address you want to send it to, and then you hit next, and then it happens. This is the receive part. Um, this is uh, important um, because this is how you're going to be getting things. Um, so say that you go, oh, whoops, you go to Coinbase and you want to send some Cardano. Um, so you go into your Cardano and you go to the wallet and then you send, right? So you, whatever, put the amount that you have here, assuming that you have that amount, and then you copy and paste to this to um, place uh, with the address. The address that you're going to put into uh, Coinbase there is here, right? So this address is generated newly every single time you use it. So when you send to this address here, that address is no longer going to be usable. It's going to generate a new address. So every single time you want to receive uh, Cardano into this account, you're going to hit, you're going to copy the clipboard. Then you're going to go to where you, you want to, whatever exchange you're using to send. And then you paste. Remember, whenever you send, whenever you use that copy and paste, there are programs that will try and um, change this address. So you got to look through. I usually look at the very beginning, like 10 or so letters and numbers, and then the very end, five or six numbers, and just make sure that that kind of matches what's in here, right? And so if you want to, you can click on this and it brings you the full address on Cardano Scan. Um, and you can see the actual, um, you know, details of this address that it's generated. So you copy the clipboard, you go to your, your Coinbase, you copy it in here, right? And then you just click continue and then it'll come up with your authenticator number and you just click OK um, and it'll send. Um, these Cardano, you can see my previous um, transactions here, um, they will show up the address that you sent it to, the average price per coin, how many confirmations it has at this point, and the fee that was associated with that transaction. And then if you want, you can go ahead and see that transaction by clicking view transaction in um, Coinbase. It brings up the Cardano Blockchain Explorer and you can see all the details of that transaction. Okay. That's basically how you send Cardano uh, through Coinbase to a Euroi wallet. It's the same process for really any wallet, but in Euroi, you just copy and paste from your receive wallet address each individual time. So remember, you're going to be copy and pasting this address uh, every single time you want to receive something because it will change. The receive address will change every single time you use it. Um, there's voting if you want to participate in voting. And then here's the delegation list. Right, so there's a lot of different staking pools that you can choose to stake with. Um, how do you stake? Literally, you decide which one you want, and then you just hit the delegate button, and that's it. And uh, well, here's the thing. It'll bring up um, this processing screen. It'll go to the fetching pool information, whatever, whatever. Um, and then it'll ask you to put in your spending password. Um, which, as you may remember, when we first brought up 
um, the wallet creation. Um, it asks you to create a new spending password. Um, so this is where that's used for, is to delegate and to send and receive uh, transactions. Um, so that's how that's used. Now that we've gone over how to um, create a new uh, wallet with Uroi and what is involved in delegation and, and, and staking like that, let's talk about how to restore a wallet. So you can restore a wallet actually through your um, wallets here. So this is the test one that we made just for this. You can actually go ahead and restore an old wallet or use your hardware wallet. Um, we're gonna go ahead and restore an old wallet. This is gonna be a Cardano wallet. Um, it also used a uh, 15 word recovery phrase. It's a standard wallet. And so, it's going to ask you for a recovery password. It's going to ask you for a name and a recovery phrase. Um, name it whatever you want. I'll put in my recovery phrase and a spending password. Now, just be aware that in order to put in the recovery phrase, you're going to want to, when you put in a word, it's going to have a bunch of suggestions for you. It will ask you to click through individual words like that. Right, and so uh, you will actually have to, you know, uh, click their options. You can't just type in each individual word. So let's go ahead and do that. Once you're finished restoring your wallet, um, it will take a moment to process your wallet data. Um, this will basically happen without this screen right up front where it says wallet syncing um, every single time you open your wallet. Um, it's basically just the wallet syncing up to the to the network. All right, so here we go. Here is my actual regular wallet. Um, it, it took quite some time to sync this up and actually get this back up and running. Um, how long? Uh, literally like five or six hours. Um, uh, just note that you know this was a time with um, significant network congestion. Um, and with a lightweight wallet like Uroi or Ada Lite, um, there will be times when this happened. Now, this is the first time it's ever been this bad. I've never experienced it where it was like literally hours and hours um, before you could actually get the full thing to sync. Um, but there have been times when it took at least a couple minutes. That's much more typical. Um, when there's a network slowdown, that it, it takes a bit longer uh, in order to um, get your full um, Uroi wallet kind of spun up and working. Um, so this is what it looks like. It shows you your total amount, how much of it is rewards, um, and then uh, the the amount that's not rewards that's in your wallet that you can send and um, stuff like that without withdrawing is up in the top right corner. Um, and then this is how much is actually delegated in your delegation list um, it, to, a, to a stake pool. Mine is goat stake. Um, we'll go over the details of staking in a moment, um, but this is what um, shows you your staking rewards over time. Um, and so I've been doing this, you can clearly see uh, a couple of epochs now, ever since what? My first reward was an epoch 266, we're currently in uh, 315. Um, and so this is how much I got at each five day interval. Um, you can see that it goes up and down with time. Remember that the percentage uh, APY is the average over the course of a year. So many, many epochs go into that average. Some, um, some epochs you'll get something above average, like I did in Epoch 307. And some epochs you'll get below average, like I just did in Epoch 313. Um, you also see a total rewards curve. Um, so this is just the cumulative rewards. This is how you see that there. Um, and then once again, it shows you your delegations um, down there. It shows you individual uh, transactions um, and how much, how many confirmations they've had. Um, and it has the whole history of all that. And then let's look real quick at the settings, right? So there's the different themes you can choose. Um, that's just general for Uroi, um, but then you can also look at, um, you know, the, the blockchain itself, which Explorer you're going to use. The default is Cardano Scan, 
Um, I see no reason to necessarily use one or the other. If you have a preference, go ahead. Um, but uh, the wallet itself, you have some options. You can manually resync it. Um, if you have wallet issues, this is where you go ahead and manually resync it. You can export the wallet between devices. That uses a, a QR code. You can also remove this from uh, the Uroi extension on this particular browser if you no longer wish to have it displayed. You can review the terms of use. Um, and then here's the logs. You can download logs of your um, uh, account activity, and then you can change the level of complexity uh, as far as what's actually shown to you and the, what the details are. Um, so that's pretty much the, the Uroi wallet. Uh, and how it works. And let's go over one other example of uh, how to put uh, ADA into a wallet and um, stake it. So in this case, let's go over the desktop version of Exodus. Exodus is really simple and frankly doesn't need much of a walkthrough, so this will be pretty quick. Um, so Exodus is a universal wallet that uses multiple different coins. Um, Yoroi is specifically for Mergo's ERG coin, ERG and Cardano's ADA coin, so you can really only use those two coins uh, on that. Exodus is different. Um, Exodus has multiple, multiple different coins that you can store on it. Um, so to start with, you download Exodus for whichever operating system you have, in this case Windows for me. You download it. It's about 154 megabytes, not too crazy, but certainly uh, bigger than your Roy. Once again, this is a hot wallet, um, not a cold wallet. So this is attached to the internet and once again needs, um, has that vulnerability. Uh, the, there is, you are in self custody with this wallet. Um, uh, you have your own private keys uh, and you're in full ownership and therefore the responsibility is entirely on you. Um, yeah, and so the, the download will be done pretty quickly couple more seconds. There you go. Now once it's done downloading, you go ahead and click on it and it'll open the installation. And once again, remember you can use Trezor to actually make uh, your Exodus more um, secure. And so really quick installation that doesn't even require you to hit any buttons. Here is Exodus. Okay, and so there's a lot of different um, assets that you can hold on here. You can see Bitcoin, um, you know, Binance Coin, Tether, um, all of these things are available. Um, Cardano is only one of the uh, things that you can use with here. Um, you can restore from backup. So there is a 12 word recovery phrase. Highly recommend that you do use that. Get a recovery phrase. Um, and it's roughly the same uh, process that you would be using with the your Roy wallet. A lot of these, you know, the the technology for all of this is is the same. Um, but you do have to restart the application in order to get that 12 word recovery phrase. Um, but let's go ahead and go straight to the Cardano part of this. And remember there is staking, and so that's largely what we're gonna be looking at. Um, it's a 4.91% APY, but as you'll see, uh, Cardano staking on Exodus is really, really simple. All of Exodus's staking options are very um, straightforward and single click. So if you wanna send uh, Cardano here, you just click um, receive, and then you, this is the, the address, you copy. And I'm gonna send myself a little bit of ADA in my Exodus wallet using Yoroi. So we open up Yoroi. And we're gonna send a couple ADA. This shows you how to do that. So you put in receiver, you put in the address, and you make sure it's the right address. 
There you go. Send a couple ADA. It's going to calculate the fee. Then it's going to ask me for my spending password. See, the fee is not nearly as bad as you would expect for like Ethereum, obviously, um, but still higher than something like Solana. But there are some really cool features of the Exodus wallet. It has its own exchange built into the wallet. Um, uh, you can send and receive with it. It has a support system. It has a lot of different assets that are easily manageable, and it's very much geared toward new users of crypto. Um, and it's meant to be straightforward in that respect. Um, so that's good. Actually, I was able to get my own siblings started with crypto with the um, with the Exodus wallet. I don't personally use it, but there you go. So here's my two ADA. Very cool. Now it's time to stake that ADA. Okay. You go to earn rewards. Remember, you need at least five ADA in order to stake it. You're not going to be choosing your own staking pool. Um, you just go ahead and put, um, you know, uh, stake and they'll just automatically take care of it. So it takes out some of the process of, of learning about staking and all that stuff. But honestly, as we're about to go over in the process, of, in the section about the details of Cardano staking, there's not that many details. This is not as complex as, for instance, Solana staking. There's not as many factors to fa factor in. Um, and frankly, in my view, um, adding on a um, lockup period is just an added restriction that you're placing on yourself by using the Exodus wallet in exchange for just a little extra simplicity. But as we just went over in terms of how to stake using Yoroi, Yoroi is already pretty simple. Cardano staking is already pretty darn simple. There's only a couple of extra stakes and it's absolutely worth doing them. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the reverse process. I'm gonna go ahead and send my ADA right back to myself. So I'm gonna go back to Yoroi. I'm gonna get the reception, copy. I'm gonna send all of it and send it to this address and send. Now, obviously, because I'm paying um, network fees, I'm gonna get back slightly less than I had. And there you go. We have now sent all of my Cardano back to Yoroi. And eventually, we're gonna get the confirmation on the transactions um, tab for um, all of the ADA that I sent back. But that's pretty much it. I mean, Exodus is really very easy. It's all single click. Um, uh, and, you know, it's, it's really easy to use. It can allow you to, um, you know, stake ADA. Um, and it's relatively easy to do so. Um, so now let's go ahead and talk about Cardano staking more generally. Talk, start off by just talking about the basic properties of Cardano staking, right? So what is what is staking in general, right? So Cardano is um, uh, a blockchain that uses Ouroboros proof of stake consensus protocol. In other words, in order to add new uh, blocks to the blockchain, uh, it uses a proof of stake mechanism as opposed to something like Bitcoin's proof of work mechanism. Um, proof of work, if we're going to really, really run through in an abbreviated form, um, uh, mining uh, apparatuses, or whatever, whether it's an ASIC miner or just a GPU miner that somebody's computer is running, um, <clears throat> basically uh, check to try and solve a, a, a puzzle. Really, it's not really solving a puzzle. 
Um, in order to uh, solve the hash for the next block in the chain, um, they're essentially randomly guessing. Uh, and if they can perform more rapid random guesses faster and get the right solution faster with the random guessing, um, they uh, can arrive at the solution faster and become the miner that gets the next block that, uh, faster. And so uh, ASICs are just specific circuits that are able to make these random guesses faster and faster and faster. Um, whereas with proof of stake, instead of mining, you mint coins. Um, and uh, this is typically, there, there's different ways to do this. There are things like Algorand's pure proof of stake, um, Cardano's Ouroboros proof of stake, um, Casper proof of stake with Ethereum, delegated proof of stake with, I believe, EOS, and probably a couple other ones. Um, but everybody's got their whole kind of variation of proof of stake. Even things like Solana's proof of history is essentially just a variation on proof of um, uh, stake. Um, so with any of these proof of stake protocols, you will be able to stake um, your coins somehow through some apparatus if it's proof of stake uh, in order to secure the network. Um, and so when you stake, there's typically some structure of fees uh, or rewards that you'll get as for being a staker. And oftentimes there's some limit, like for instance, in order to yourself stake Ethereum, you need at least 32 ETH to put up as stake. Um, and with Cardano, in terms of native staking, there isn't really a limit. You can just kind of stake however much ADA you have if you're using, for instance, your ROI. Um, there are other parameters that um, are involved in staking generally. Like for instance, sometimes there's a lockup period involved um, with Solana. Um, you know, it's a three, it's about three days um, between each um, period where they get rewards. So you, you takes three days to activate your stake um, and then every three days afterwards, you get your, your, your staking rewards. Um, with Cardano, it's about five days. Every epoch is five days. And so um, there isn't an activation period really uh, in the same way that it is with Sol. Um, but you do have to wait until the next epoch for it to actually start generating rewards. So in a way, it kind, kind of is. It just doesn't say it that way. Um, so first of all, there's no lockup period inherent to Cardano staking. Um, you can stake and unstake immediately if you're using native staking through like Daedalus or Euroi. Um, and then uh, slashing is another thing to consider. Solana, for instance, has slashing where rewards get taken away if there's some inconsistency or bad actor behavior um, from your delegation pool. Cardano does not have slashing. They don't take away rewards. You just don't make rewards if your, you know, if your uh, stake pool uh, gets turned off or something like that. It starts behaving irregularly. They just don't get rewards. So there is no slashing. There is no risk of actually losing your rewards. Um, and then, you know, when you're staking your Cardano, your Cardano actually your ADA stays in your wallet. Um, so. Really, there's not a lot of risk and downside to staking Cardano. You get more ADA over time. Um, so if you actually believe in Cardano long term, there's really no reason not to stake. Um, and that's part of why when you look at Cardano staking, people people stake long term. That number of the percentage of people who stake their, their ADA doesn't really go down so much with market dips. People really believe in Cardano and those people stake and there's no reason to unstake it really, unless you're choosing to move out of Cardano entirely, um, which is you know your own decision. Um, but inherently, the process of Cardano staking doesn't have a lot of the negatives, the potential risks that you see with some other blockchains, like for instance, with lockups uh, and slashing. Um, and so there's not a lot of downside to staking with uh, staking your ADA. Um, now, there are some caveats to some of these properties, like for instance, um, with the Exodus wallet, um, it takes 20 days to actually have your stake approved. You don't get to choose which staking pool um, you stake to. If you're staking with Exodus, it's Everstake. Their own staking pool that they run is the only one that you get to actually stake with. Um, and so, you know, you can still perform transactions with Exodus if you're staking with them and you can unstake instantly, but getting in requires a 2A to deposit, um, which is returned when you unstake. 
and the approval process to actually start getting your awards and stuff is much longer. It's 20 days before you get approved and you're actually able to stake, um, which is why I didn't bother going ahead and staking my own ADA. Um, I'm not going to wait 20 days. I don't really feel like doing that whole process, but that's how you do it with Exodus. It's still one click. It's still very easy, but it does take away some of your options and add some limitations that you otherwise wouldn't necessarily have. If, for instance, you're using Daedalus or Uroi. Um, so those are some of the basic properties of staking with um, Cardano. Um, uh, going into just a little bit more detail, um, in order to maintain decentralization so that people don't all stake with the same pool, and why would that be a potential issue is that, you know, m the more stake is um, that, uh, that a certain pool has, the more likely it will be chosen to produce the next block. And so, um, based on so there's a couple of parameters that the actual details of running a stake pool are are beyond the scope of this video but there are some things to know um stake pools can pledge some of their ADA uh, and with that it's the a0 parameter um the the stake pools pledge um the larger that pledge um the more chance they can have of actually generating new block if they have more ADA delegated to them um, they have even more chance of, of producing a new block. Uh, and obviously these rewards for staking are given for having more blocks produced. Um, and so as you can imagine, if a certain pool has a whole lot of ADA um, that's de delegated to them, um, they get more and more and more chance of producing the next block. In order to keep that under control, there's a parameter called K. Um, it's a saturation parameter basically and if you go past a certain point um, there's a point of diminishing returns with your staking rewards and so once a staking pool gets too big um, they start having you know less rewards as you know uh, compared to how much stake that they have in order to disincentivize people from continuing to stake there so that their network doesn't become too centralized um, and so there is a uh, desirability score um, that you may notice depending on you know where you're looking at, whether it's you know in the CISA block explorer that comes up with your ROI or some other one. Um, that uh, that desirability score is a combination of you know that saturation parameter and well, the stake pool's performance. Stake pool performance being you know uh, how much how many blocks they're producing compared to how much actually they have um, delegated and staked, um, and you know that performance can either under or overperform. Um, based on you know like uh, various factors like for instance if the stake pool operator turned off their node for a little while um, or, or whatever for whatever reason they might be underperforming um, or by random chance they may have simply been chosen a couple extra times and had their performance increase um, versus uh, what would be projected and so when you decide to stake your Cardano um, uh, there's going to be a staking calc rewards calculator that you can use to see how much you might have over the course of, a, of like a year period or something like that based on how much you start out with um, and how much you're DCAing in. Um, and so that's one way to track how much you might expect in terms of reward. And it is essentially a form of passive income. Um, so there's a lot of pros to staking in that sense. And so something that you're going to see, there's there's a couple things that you're going to see. Um, so we'll use the delegation stake uh, screen on Uroi as an example here. Um, you're going to see ROA, which is return on ADA. That percent is going to be a really big factor in terms of um, what you choose going forward for your staking pools. Um, obviously, you want a higher ROA. Um, there's the share to pool size. Um, so how much of a, of a share of ADA there is delegated to that pool and how much percent that is of the total uh, amount of ADA that's um, staked. And then it breaks down the costs as well, the fixed versus the variable costs of staking with that pool. 340, you'll notice that all the pools have 340 going down, that's the fixed cost. Um, that's how much minimum they have to um, have as a cost. Whereas the percent that, that, that's listed is the variable cost. That's set by the stake, staking pool. Um, so obviously you want lower variable costs there, higher return on ADA. 
Um, and obviously having a better pledge is also going to uh, relate to the number of blocks that have actually been produced um, by that staking pool. Uh, so you want a history, a track record of producing blocks consistently, um, a relatively low variable cost that's listed there, and an overall higher return on ADA. That's generally the thing. Um, in, in general, however, as long as there's that consistent return um, and you know a, a reasonable uh, fee structure and a decent return on ADA, honestly, the difference in return on ADA versus high quality staking pools is not super large. Um, and so as long as they haven't run into uh, you know oversaturation issues um, where you know their K is super high, it's not going to be a big deal. You know, that's the thing about Cardano staking versus something like Solana staking. Um, you don't really have as much to lose. And, you know, uh, if you, there are some people who will say that that whatever many percent, especially if you're staking a lot, um, makes a bigger difference to them, right? They're, they might be hopping from staking pool to staking pool to try and maximize their gains so that when one becomes oversaturated and K starts to dip into their gains and start taking off, however many tenths of a percentage or hundredths of a percentage and they just want to re-maximize, they start skipping to the next highest return on ADA. Um, you can do that. It's an active strategy for staking where you eke out a little bit of extra reward. I personally don't think that's worth it, um, but especially if some of you are mega whales, maybe you think that is worth it. Maybe that difference of a couple point, tenths of a percent is actually a million dollars to you. It isn't to me. Um, but you can choose to do that. Um, and so that's a more active strategy of staking, um, which would require just a bit more effort, but you don't actually have to do that. As with other staking, it is often prudent to kind of spread your um, ADA between stake pools just in case something does happen to um, one stake pool and it starts to run into issues, whether expected or unexpected, whatever. Um, that's generally a good strategy, but like I said, the downside with a lot of these more reliable uh, stake pools that are larger and have an infrastructure and a, and a setup that's sustainable over time um, is not so great that I'm particularly worried about it, any one of them uh, overly much. And so because of the lack of a lot of downside to Cardano staking, the lack of stake, uh, slashing, the lack of lockup periods, I mean, you basically just choose whatever's got a good return that seems like it's going to stay and have a good uptime um, and isn't overly saturated, then you're pretty much set. You can kind of set it and forget it and periodically come back to make sure that maybe, you know, you can change your stay pool for a, a less saturation, which is something, which is something I'm co contemplating myself with the GOAT staking. Um, they do have GOAT 3 right now, which I believe is newer and we'll see what its track record is and all that stuff, but it won't run into the same saturation problem and, you know, there you go. You might periodically shuffle your ADA into other staking pools that have less saturation, but otherwise it's relatively easy um, to stake your ADA and frankly it's not a very stressful decision to choose which uh, stake pool to delegate with. Um, so there you have it. So we've gone over an example of how to do, you know, staking with Exodus, how to do staking with Uroi, um, and, you know, the details of how to stake with Cardano and choose a delegation pool. Um, please like if you got value and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more like this. Um, thanks for watching.